So, dear participants, dear guests, welcome to our today's online seminar that we offer you today in cooperation with three German universities. And our guests are today the TU Braunschweig, the Technical uh, the University of Applied Sciences of Hof, and the Technical University of Applied Sciences of Ulm. I am pleased that you will be spending the next 60 minutes uh, together. My name is Sarah Inaje, and I'm the Deputy Director of the Regional DRD Office Tunis, and I will accompany you now during the next 60 minutes during this online session. Our regional office offers you on a regular basis online seminars with German universities twice or three, or three times a year. And you always get information about the universities, sometimes about a very special study program. And you have sometimes also the possibility to have an in-depth look uh, at the student life, uh, at the rich history, or also at the culture. If you have already attended one of our online seminars, then you certainly know that they are always interactive. We have already began with a polling. Maybe you have already um, taken part in and, and answered some questions. It's always important for us to know who is the, who is the audience, who is the public um, behind the screens. And uh, we have also the chat. The chat will rest open during the whole um, session and I will moderate the questions. It means that at the end of the presentations, we will have question and answer sessions and our guests will try to answer as much questions as possible. We have also some um, brochures and flyers from the universities uh, uh, that we will um, that we will offer you at the end of the presentation. You will have the possibility to um, to download them. We will have now a closer look on the polling, and I will inform my guests about the situation. So, first of all, we have asked um, if you intend to do a bachelor program or a master program in Germany, and the majority says, um, let's say, 75% um, want to do a master's program in Germany and not a bachelor's program. And then we asked about the fields and the big majority of the participants of today comes from engineering, followed by natural sciences, healthcare, and what else? And law, law, economics, and social sciences. So that's just for you to have, an, to have a first uh, impression about the public. Um, one last information, our online seminar will be recorded and will be available on our, our YouTube channel with the name DRD Tunisie. And my colleague will put the direct link of our YouTube channel now in the chat. I'm now very happy to introduce you Dr. Dominic Baumgarten, who is at the TU Braunschweig, the officer responsible for recruiting and early career stage. He will provide you with all the important information about the TU Braunschweig, the Technical University of Braunschweig, and uh, will be available for further questions afterwards, of course. So, um, dear Doc uh, Dr. Baumgarten, the floor is now yours. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, first of all, can you hear me? Because otherwise I'll have to sort it out. That's great. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ms. Energy, for that kind introduction and a warm welcome to everyone. And first of all, thank you for your interest in hearing more about uh, what we have to offer and also what the colleagues have to offer at their universities. Um, as I was introduced, uh, my name is Dominik Baumgarten and I'm an officer for early career stage, but also for recruiting. And um, therefore, today I'm going to introduce you to our university. The, the German name is Technische Universität Braunschweig, in short, TU Braunschweig. Um, and I'm going to tell you some more about that right now. Um, to start a little from the, from the bigger perspective and then going uh, more into detail, I would like to introduce to you the city of Braunschweig first. The English name for Braunschweig would be Brunswick, but usually we go by the German name. Um, it's a city located uh, in the middle of Germany, slightly to the north, and it holds a population of around about 250,000 inhabitants. And that makes it the second largest city in Lower Saxony. Lower Saxony is the part of Germany uh, that is marked in light green in the map. 
and uh, Braunschweig is one of the biggest cities in it. It's also one of the oldest cities. It's first mentioned uh, more than 1,000 years ago, and um, it has been a cultural and political center ever since the Middle Ages. And it's also famous uh, for its membership in the Hanseatic Trade League. So if you know about the European Hansa trade, uh, they have very pretty architecture like you see in the um, in the lower left corner, um, but then we also inserted a picture of the river Ochre that surrounds the city, just to give you an impression of what the cityscape looks like. And from more modernist times, you see uh, one of the main market squares. Uh, so these are three images to give you a very first impression of what the city landscape looks like. Um, as I said, it has a central position in the heart of Germany, and it ranks uh, fourth among all major German cities in terms of quality of life. So everyone that was introduced uh, or interviewed basically <clears throat> gave a thumbs up and said, you know what, it's not only a good research area, but people actually really like and enjoy living in the city as well. Um, the city of Braunschweig is um, part of the broader region that we called research region Braunschweig. And uh, Tium Braunschweig is uh, a member in that research region. And uh, research region means um, that it's one of the densest areas uh, in Europe concerning research of various kinds. So not only university research, but also non-university research uh, and leading on to uh, industry research. And when I hear that most of you come from the engineering field or the natural sciences field, I would probably among that um, the chart that we prepared point out uh, the so-called PTB, that's the National Metrology Institute, and we work closely together with them uh, in several engineering fields. And one feature that this uh, institution has is, for example, it has the world's most precise atomic clock. So that is one of the features. If you're interested in the field of metrology, uh, you'll definitely find very good infrastructure in Braunschweig. And uh, of course, we're partnering with them. You also find um, the Helmholtz Center for Infections and Diseases. That would be interesting for the ones um, uh, interested in natural sciences, but also in health sciences. And probably some of you might even know that center from the press um, because uh, they did a lot of research uh, during the COVID pandemic and worked on medication and also vaccination. So it's that kind of popular research and uh, PTB as well as the Helmholtz Center um, are within bike distance. So most of our scholars, most of our professors are enrolled in both institutions. If that is the, uh, their field of research, and usually it takes them about 15 minutes from A to B. So that is one of the uh, of the major perks of Braunschweig not being the super biggest metropolis, that all the research infrastructure is within the city and you can very easily go from A to B within the region as well. So leading to the university itself, um, the key figures that we evaluated uh, in December 23, uh, um, first of all, it has uh, the longest tradition as a technical university in Germany. It was founded in 1745. And currently uh, we have around 16,800 enrolled students uh, of which we have a student population of 3,200 uh, of international students. So it's definitely an open house. And uh, the same applies to uh, the research staff members. Overall, we hold a staff of 3,800 employees, 2,300 of them are researchers and 240, um, 242 of them are professors. Uh, another important thing might be that we have almost 400 million of overall budget, a little more um, than uh, a third of that uh, comes from third party funding. So we're very active in organizing research funding and applying for external grants. Then we have four so-called core research areas in six faculties. I'm going to go into a little uh, more detail uh, later on, as well as in particular two clusters of excellence and two uh, collaborative research centers. So quite large research amalgamations, um, which are also open to students already. So you can participate in research projects before you even into a role, enroll into a research position. Uh, that is because we offer overall 86 degree programs. Unfortunately, some of them are in German only, but the majority is at least partially English speaking. Some of them are completely in English. Um, and once you're enrolled, uh, the research infrastructure is already open to you. So either if you're working as a student assistant or if you're working on a master thesis that uh, involves applied science, you can also uh, benefit from the infrastructure. 
Um, overall, what TU Braunschweig stands for is uh, being a technical uh, university. Um, it has a strong industrial and cooperation partner network, as I said, in one of Europe's most uh, active research regions. It is, um, as it's quite traditional and old, it's um, the, the oldest um, university of technology in Germany. And it's also a member of the so-called TU9 Alliance. And the TU9 stands short for um, uh, Germany's leading nine universities of technology. So they are um, fostering a national network and they are connected to, for example, uh, the universities of Stuttgart, of Berlin, of Karlsruhe, one in Munich. So it's spread all over Germany and you could benefit from that network because, you, because as soon as you're enrolled in one of the universities, it's much easier to get in touch um, with the each eight individual partners. Um, Further on with what TU Braunschweig stands for um, being, again, being a technical university, the main focus is set on the STEM field. So we have a broad range of engineering programs, um, which are complemented by natural sciences, social sciences, and humanities. But we also stand for transdisciplinary uh, education and a strong basis um, is set on research combined with a high application orientation. So as I said, in the best case, you will not only sit in the library and do theoretical work, but we will try to have you involved into applied science as soon as possible, even though it's not formally a university of applied sciences. Um, it's a comprehensive university with six faculties. So just to go uh, through them very quickly to not uh, take the colleagues time, uh, we have a faculty that is called Karl Friedrich Gauss faculty. That's a proper name of a famous Braunschweig researcher. And it holds um, fields of study such as mathematics, computer science, business science, and social sciences. And then we have a faculty of life sciences with the classic life and health sciences. So biology, virology, um, uh, further uh, life sciences onto even battery research. Um, our Faculty of Architecture, Civil Engineering and Environmental Sciences invests in fields of sustainability. So, for example, they do coastal research, sustainability research, uh, agricultural research and all of that area. And then uh, one interest, uh, interesting faculty for you as you're um, mostly interested in the engineering field is the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering, but also the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Information Technology and Physics, as it covers almost uh, all fields of engineering, mostly working interdisciplinary. But uh, I'll make sure to um, definitely send you a list of all of our programs because there are too many to, uh, to call them out right now. And even though um, we're a, fa a university that invests mainly in the STEM field, however, we still uh, foster a faculty of humanities and education. And they cover uh, most fields of humanities like languages. Um, uh, they have um, history departments, they're doing art, and they're also doing uh, educational fields. So basically you can either study the field itself or you can study uh, the education of that field. Um, then I told you about the four core research areas that we have, uh, and the university identified the following four, which are mobility, which leads from ground mobility to, um, to airplane and aircraft mobility, metrology, which covers the sciences of measuring, of, of scaling onto quantum computing, Engineering for Health, as I told you, the Faculty of Life Sciences does almost everything in life sciences. However, we unfortunately do not have a university medicine, at least not yet. And the field of Future City covers a broad range uh, from architecture to social sciences. So we're always trying to work quite interdisciplinary, um, which leads to uh, the two clusters of excellence. In very, very short, uh, Germany holds a so-called excellence strategy. And that is a national program to highlight explicit, um, let's say, research lighthouses, if you will. And that is a national competition. And in the last round, TU Braunschweig was successful with two clusters of excellence, which is quite good and uh, puts them in quite a good league. And one of them is called C, Sustainability and Energy Efficient Aviation. Um, that is the one in field of metrology of all kinds, mainly aircraft um, aviation. 
And we have a joint cluster with the University of Hannover, which is called Quantum Frontiers, and that belongs to the area of metrology. So as I told you, uh, engineering uh, on quantum technologies, on measuring techniques of almost every kind. Um, very quick overview to Theo Braunschweig International. So we have around currently around 3,200 international students who come from uh, around about 110 different countries and overall form 19, almost 20% of the overall student population. And they all do benefit, whether they're international or national, from a network of 310 partner universities and overall 170 Erasmus agreements. So if you're willing to come to Germany, but you're also interested in European uh, mobility, you're definitely in a good place. Uh, we have several strategic partners in Strathclyde in Scotland, Tampere in Finland, uh, in Rhode Island in the US, and key exchange partners among others are in the US, Canada, South America, India, China, Japan, and Singapore, but never limited to that. So even though uh, Tunisia is not on that list yet, it doesn't mean that you're not warmly welcome, for example. So just take these as, uh, as some examples. Um, and overall, my call uh, would be, or oh, that's the main interest why I joined this, um, this online university presentation is our slogan, come study and or work with us. Because we're continuously looking for, in particular, master students, bachelor students as well, but we have a broader range for master students, basically from all academic disciplines. So uh, we offer degree programs, but we could also have a closer look at individual uh, internships if required. And uh, to get in touch with Germany and the German culture, we offer summer schools on a regular basis with different academic scopes. Uh, furthermore, we're looking for PhD students, again, from all academic fields. So if you uh, did a master or already hold a master and are interested in further research, let us know and we can tell you more about the individual funding opportunities. And at a little later stage of your career, of course, you're also welcome at a postdoctoral stage. So just keep it in mind. And if you're interested, but do a PhD somewhere else first, maybe you come back to Braunschweig. Uh, you're also warmly invited to do that as well. And uh, last but not least, here is my contact data. Um, but I make sure to send you an email after this presentation. Uh, so you don't need to type anything down. Uh, but this will follow up anyway. Yeah, with that, thank you for your interest uh, and for listening and bearing with me. And uh, I don't know, maybe there are some questions right now. Other than that, uh, I'll wait till the end of the session and answer them then. So thank you again. Thank you very much, Mr. Baumgarten, for this inspiring and informative presentation. We already have really lots of questions, so you still have two minutes before we go to the next slot. And I would like to, to give you already one, two questions that we can answer now, if you, if you allow. Yeah, yes, please. Okay, so first question I have here. Hi, I'm a computer engineering student. I want to pursue a master degree in artificial intelligence related field or embedded systems. However, I want to know how can I benefit from a scholarship? So first question, do you offer these fields? Second question, are there any scholarships? Um, yeah, thank you for the double question. Uh, the first and much easier answer is yes, we definitely do offer that program. And as I said, um, to follow up, I will send you a list of the overall uh, offer of um, uh, bachelor and master degrees that we have and what the individual requirements are. So you can definitely scroll through that list. I'm very sure that I definitely heard the name, but we might even have two or three different degrees. So the field definitely exists. Um, on scholarships, however, the university itself, unfortunately, doesn't offer scholarships on its own, but we're working closely together with, for example, the, the German Academic Exchange Service, so DID, which also hosts this presentation. And we do have an international house, which also hosts the International Incoming Office for Students. And what they usually do is as soon as we have an applicant who says, I would love to come, but I definitely need a scholarship, they'll look into closer detail to find out the right uh, scholarship that might be suitable for you. And the idea is probably the most popular one, but we can also uh, look into various scholarship databases. And uh, depending on your individual situation, try to give you an alternative and say, here's a list of two, three, four, five options. Is there anything that you're interested in? And then the colleagues can guide you through the application of that. 
So enrolling in studies and applying for a scholarship would be two separate processes, but Theo Braunschweig has the infrastructure to guide you through both. Hey, thank you for this uh, um, long and uh, informative answer. Um, we will write you now down the um, our scholarship database where you can find the programs regarding your country and, and your field. And we will also give you the link of one of our online seminars where we have already presented all our um, scholarship programs in a detailed way. You will find them immediately in the chat box. Thank you, Mr. Baumgarten. This yeah, was your you. slot. Um, we will come later to the answer to, to the questions mm -hmm. and we will now continue um, with the second part of this uh, online presentation. And I'm very happy to introduce you now to Professor Matthias Drossel. He's the head of uh, Master of Science in Cross-Cultural Nursing Practice, a very trendy um, discipline here in the Maghreb. And he will represent the University of Applied Sciences of Hof. Dear Mr. Drossel, it's your turn now. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome everybody. My English is not so perfect like Mr. Baumgarten. So uh, if you have any questions, tell me. Um, I would like to explain you something about our program of cross-cultural nursing practice at the Hof University in Germany. And perhaps you know um, the heart of Germany. We heard from Mr. Baumgarten. Hof is uh, in the northern uh, north of Bavaria. You see Munich, a little bit in the north is Nuremberg and Bamberg, and then there is Hof University. We call it the um, heart of Europe because on the eastern of Ho uh, Hof is Prague, in the north is Berlin, um, and so on. So you see um, there are many po um, possibilities to go to the big cities, but Hof is a small city, you have to know. It's a small university. We have about uh, 4,000 students. 1,000 of them are international students. I think it's a very important topic for you. 1,000 of them are international students from all about the world, India, Tunisia, and so on. You see, we um, call it hands-on education. We are a university of applied science. So employability is our main goal. We are teaching based on application-oriented knowledge. So project with partners or side visits. We have interaction with uh, practitioners. They are teaching you. Every um, body in our university has a uh, yeah, has some experience in the in his field. And we have innovative and diverse teaching methods. Uh, for example, skills labs, immersive technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality. You see it um, in on the right picture. We are using it for anatomy physiology, for example, at our um, department of um, innovation, innovative sciences, interdisciplinary and innovative sciences. There is the um, program of cross-cultural nursing practice located. Small study groups, I think you see it on the photo on the right side down there. Our groups are not bigger than 25 to 30 persons in this faculty, in this department. And you see the strong focus on career promoting activities. And I want to show you the left picture with a simulation. You see the blue one, we call it um, a high fidelity simulation. And um, we need this high fidelity simulator for our program in nursing. And that's the um, main topic of my slides. The cross cultural nursing practice. Um, it's on an ANP level from International Council of Nursing, the framework of ANP level. So it's a career option for you if you have a bachelor in nursing. You can do our, um, you can study our cross cultural nursing practice program. And I show you some informations about the program, but also why we establish a program like this. 
we hope you you have a bachelor of nursing in Tunisia and you come to our country to work with us in the healthcare sector because there is a very very huge demand for skilled nurses there are new laws that um, shows us that um, not only um, vocational trained nurses are needed also the academic way with bachelor and uh, master and we um, have a yeah additionally uh, 500,000 nurses needed until um, 2030 because of demographic um, challenges in our country. And I think your Bachelor of Nursing in, in Tunisia is a very good one because it's oriented um, at the framework of International Council of Nursing um, curriculum. I will be to uh, Tunisia in two weeks for four days in Zeus and so on because of this program. And uh, many of you coming to Germany and just get their recognition. And I think it's, yeah, I think your competences are so much needed. And why shouldn't you upgrade your competences on a master level so you can use it everywhere in the international field of nursing. I think it's a good opportunity for you. I show you a short slide, not really short, I know, but you'll see the models of our program. On the left one, and I think it's very, very important for you to get um, the language, German B2 language, um, I want on one hand on daily nursing practice, on the other hand a general level and you get intercultural trainings and culture sensitive care. I think it's um, very important for you to get intercultural trainings so you can, um, yeah, perhaps you can better start in the field of nursing or healthcare sector and there are also some differences um, in the field of caring, of nursing, how it works in Tunisia and in Germany. Um, for example, things like um, uh, something to bring to eat to the people or caring competences like um, washing or something like this are not um, the special competences you got in uh, Tunisia, but there are many other um, competences you bring with you. We call it in Germany healing competences. And this is the um, second one, the yellow one. You um, get models uh, in Germany with uh, evidence-based nursing um, thing. So like uh, researching workshop, how to bring the evidence to uh, the practice or um, doing healing competences on an advanced level of nursing and also how to lead the staff and empowering them professionally. That means not you are in leadership, so on. In the management sector, no, you're working with the patients, but um, you know how to bring evidence with your team into the practice. And that's not um, very usual in Germany because I told you before, um, there are many years, they just made a vocational training in nursing and there are only uh, less uh, of German nurses who are going the bachelor's way so on the last few years. And then you go to, into two internships in the second year and um, doing your master thesis both in the practice, practicals part, in hospitals, for example. I just want to tell you that getting a recognition in Germany is included in our program. So you have to know um, directly joining the labor market is one, uh, ch yeah, one chance for you. But um, I think um, getting into the system, getting intercultural trainings, getting culture sensitive care knowledge for Germany in the first year and going in the internships and in the master thesis part um, into the practice is a good um, option for you because you get the recognition too. Yeah. I will go on on the next slide, perhaps um, 
yeah, our university, there is an easy and direct exchange with our professors. A modern innovative lecture approach. I showed you high fidelity simulation, virtual reality, augmented reality things, and so on. And of course, you be, you get valuable work experience and the intercultural competence gained during the internship semester. The requirements: if you want to join our program, you need a bachelor degree in the field of nursing. I think uh, Tunisian nurses have a bachelor um, at least um, at 180 ECTS. All the university offering this in, in colleges offering this in Tunisia, so we have no problem also with a practical experience. But um, one challenge for you is um, the proficiency in English because the first semester in, you learn intercultural competences and culture sensitive care and it's teached in English. So we want to, uh, proficiency in English from you like TOEFL or IELTS score and um, the requirement of a two level in German. I, I think a two level in German is not really a challenge for you, but um, perhaps the proficiency in English. Yeah, we should talk about the career perspectives and um, we are talking about a uh, A&P level, so we are talking about advanced practice nursing or, or advanced nursing practice. But um, the hospitals in Germany also need people who do um, nursing projects, um, evidence-based like, so you can get a evidence-based nursing project manager or nursing specialist in a, high, a field of skill and grade mix or something like uh, case management and so on. These are only a few possibilities for you. A short wrap up, um, the degree at which is awarded is a Master of Science. Duration is four semesters. The language of instruction, I told you in the first semester is English, but in the first semester you um, also have models in Germany, in German um, B1, B2. And they are um, teached logically in um, German. On the first, sem uh, on the second semester, you um, it's all teached in German, and the third and fourth is in the practical part. So it's um, in the internships you need the German language. No tuitions in this program. Um, we are supported from the Bahrain state government in this program. We have many services and support because we are very experienced in the field of international nurse, uh, international students, and perhaps also in nurses. Um, we can support you um, by the organizational part, assistance in finding accommodation, orientation weeks. We have also prior your start of your studies, social integration and career events. And also you can use the public transportation in the city of Hof for free. A short message why you should come to Germany if you are in the health system and why you should do nursing in Germany. I think, yeah, the entry salary approximately by uh, 4,000 euros is a good salary um, in the field of nursing, also for master nurses. You can get additional incomes for special tasks and functions in this field. You can, you can join one of the world's best and comprehensive social systems. Um, you have low cost of living compared to other countries, especially in a rural area like Hof. Cheap public transportation, clear regulation for your family reunification, and no costs for education of children. So we hope you come to Germany and stay with us in the healthcare system. So go with us. We have about 48 partners in this field, no fees of the program. The program is for them designed um, for those who want to develop their career in addition to professional recognition get the recognition but also a master degree you get paid internships and we have scholarships thank you very much
Thank you very much, Professor Drossel. I think we can ask one question. Is it okay for you as well? Yeah, sure. Okay, sure. so I have here a question. Ha Hello, I'm a first year student in human medicine at University of Tripoli in Libya. Is there a funded or semi-funded scholarship from your university or at, or at any university? You studied medicine, I heard? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's just for nurses. Our program is just for nurses. Okay, so if you want to change, because you're now in the first year, if you want to change uh, the, the, the field, then uh, maybe it could be interesting for you. So, yeah. Professor Drossel, thank you very much for your presentation. We will have later, I hope, some time to, um, to have a deeper look on the questions. And I would like now to give the floor to Professor uh, von Schwerin. She will give us further information about the Technical University of Applied Sciences of Ulm. And Professor von Schwerin represents the Department of Electrical Engineering and Information Technology at Ulm University. The title of her presentation is the following, Study Electrical Engineering or Computer Sciences in Ulm. And we have seen at the beginning that the majority of our public today comes from engineering, and I hope that you will benefit from this presentation. So, uh, Ms. von Schwerin, uh, the floor is now yours. I'm sorry for the um, to, uh, for, for this unmuting problem, but I would like to extend um, a warm welcome to you all on behalf of Ulm University of Applied Sciences in Germany. So, my name is Marianne von Schwerin, and I teach on the international degree programs at our university. We offer two bachelor's degree programs at THU, which are taught entirely in English. This is namely electrical engineering and information technology, and uh, the other is computer science. And I look forward to welcome you as a new student at our university. So, Ulm is in the south of Germany, not far from Austria, Switzerland, and France, as you can see here. And Ulm itself is a medium sized, lively, and livable city. So, I think being in Ulm is pleasant and safe. So, Ulm has a full university and the Technical University THU which is a University of Applied Sciences, which I present today. So this is us. We have two campuses, a uh, founding campus from the 1960. This is the first one on the pictures and a pretty new energy efficient campus that houses um, the electrical engineering department. Ulm itself um, offers the, the opportunity to experience on the, the one side history and culture, and on the other side, we have a lot of festivals and activities in the city all year around. Just two weeks ago, we had a big carnival parade with thousands of masked participants, like you can see here on the, on the picture. Uh, now, let me tell you some facts and figures about our university. So we have around three and a half thousand students uh, and our proportion of international students is around 13%, but we are aiming to increase this number further. Many come from our 70 partner universities, some only for one term, others for their whole study time. We have 125 professors, so we have a quite good relationship with the students. We maintain close contact with industry. We offer dual study programs together with them, and many final theses are carried out in, in cooperation with uh, companies. So, at, oh, sorry, um, at THU, we teach and conduct research in the key areas of um, sustainable energy systems. So. You can or you deal with climate friendly and energy efficient living. We uh, deal with digital technologies and AI, uh, and we are taking care for solutions for a digital economy and society. Um, we have the focus area modern mobility, where we uh, where we re do research or teach in intelligent mobility and new vehicle technologies. We are doing technology in health and medicine, 
So we are dealing with health support through old age, and we have the intelligent industrial systems um, to create value uh, and uh, new quality of life. So uh, in accordance to our profile fields, we have six departments. The two uh, with international study programs I'm introducing today are the electrical engineering and information technology and computer science. So in fall this year, we will be offering the bachelor's degree program in electrical engineering and information technology as an international degree program completely taught in English for the first time. So at the moment we are teaching in German, but we will have a second line teaching, uh, which is taught in English completely. This program gives students access to an important and future oriented field of activity and enables them to shape the future in many areas. So as an electrical engineer at our university, you deal with climate friendly energy supply. You're involved in global networking with mobile device, uh, devices and connections, and you can develop powerful microelectronics. You may be part of uh, industrial automa uh, automation, and you get familiar with new vehicle drives and safe and autonomous driving. So you will get a foundation for digitalization in all areas of life. So our study programs are practice oriented and have a high laboratory component. So we have a new and modern teaching and laboratory, uh, laboratory infrastructure and we focus uh, on topics like the electronic circuits or microprocessors. We are dealing with intelligent interconnected systems, uh, yeah, autonomous driving, Internet of Things and embedded systems and AI. On the other hand, we have the computer science bachelor, and there we have focused topics like information systems and AI. Uh, we are doing mobile computing. We are dealing with IT security. We have a focus point computer engineering, uh, as well as service robotics and a focus point medical information systems. So in uh, our part of Germany, there is a fee of 1,500 euros uh, per semester for non-EU students, but this is um, heavily discussed at the moment and it is likely to be abolished. I hope this will be already in fall this year. So the electrical engineering bachelor's degree course lasts seven semesters. One of these semester five is an internship semester, which can be completed in one of our uh, many partner companies. The final thesis can also be written in collaboration with a company. Um, and often it is the first step towards uh, and sub subsequent employment then. Um, additionally, we have, we offer a master's or different master programs. They all last three semesters and these are master programs in um, the area of uh, engineering, electrical engineering, energy engineering, and in the area of uh, computer science, especially we have an uh, intelligent systems master, which lasts three semesters and is taught in English as well. So if you have a look to our study program, then you see that this is structures like, like follows. We first um, offer the fundamentals of electrical engineering uh, and uh, we try to develop basic skills. Then we continue with uh, advanced studies. So there you acquire core competencies in electrical engineering and then at the end of your studies, there is the bachelor thesis um, uh, combined with some electives you still have to, to do. Um, but you can do your thesis on practically relevant topics. And often we, uh, this, uh, the thesis is in cooperation with industry. 
So the computer science program is uh, structured somewhat differently. It lasts eight semesters and the practical part in industry can be combined with the bachelor's thesis and it's uh, at the end of the study program. Here as well, we have a three semester master, um, which can be, um, or, yeah, which you can uh, choose independent, independently from the bachelor program or which you can combine with the bachelor program then. So here again, uh, the the uh, the structure of the uh, the study program. We have the basic studies with fundamentals of computer science, um, development of basic skills. Then the advanced studies in uh, focus topics. You have to select three out of nine focus topics, which you can find here on the slides. Um, and we have a lot of projects throughout these focus topics. And then um, in uh, the final year, you will do your bachelor's thesis and an internship in, a, um, in, in industry, and you really deal with uh, practically relevant topics. Um, and yeah, finally, you will get your degrees, uh, hopefully then. Yeah, to give you a taste of what studying in Ulm uh, or at Ulm uh, University of Applied Sciences is like, we have made a video for you to watch. You can find it uh, uh, with this link or this QR code. So I hope I was able to motivate you for studying in Ulm and I look forward to receiving your uh, application. So here you have a brief summary of uh, the most important points, but I will of course be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. von Schwerin, for this exciting presentation. Okay, so thank you very much for all your answers. Thank you very much for your presentation and all the uh, input you have given to our audience. They are still much more questions, but unfortunately, time is running. Um, I would also like to thank um, uh, the audience for um, for your interest, for your interaction. I think that you will be contacted from uh, our guests um, after this presentation um, to get maybe more information. You have the possibility to download um, the brochures and flyers. Um, uh, you, you have um, uh, you, th that were provided from the German universities. Please download them. We will not be able to send them to you. And um, we will also have a recording from this um, from this uh, online seminar, and this it will be uh, available in a couple of days on, on our YouTube channel. Um, thank you also to my colleague for uh, the technical support and uh, thank you once again to the German universities um, for, for, for all your input you have given to our region, to our uh, audience and uh, hope that I will see you um, soon in another occasion. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.